أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. This is Rihanna again. Today I'm going to tell you the life of Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم, Part 15, Battle of Uhud. So let's begin. After the Quraysh group had was defeated by the brave and strong Muslims at Badr at the Battle of Badr. They were very upset at the Muslim, and they were very sad for their soldiers who had died. When the Quraysh tribe sent some peoples to on a uh, sent some people on a business trip, they would be robbed by Muslim soldiers, and the Muslim soldiers took what they had, and the Muslim soldiers will celebrate what they had in that in the caravan fight. So the caravan ran to Abu Sufyan, the main leader or commander in chief of the Quraysh soldiers, told him that what they, what the Muslim had done to the caravans. So Abu Sufyan became very mad, and the leaders of Makkah became very mad, and they were very furious about the Muslims. So one guy who heard. About plan, who heard the plan of Abu Sufyan to kill the Prophet ﷺ and destroy Medina? So he rushed to the Prophet and told what happened and what they were planning and what would they do. The Prophet ﷺ put all of his soldiers guarding outside of Medina, uh, outside of Medina, all the time during the prayer. He put um, archers at the top of the towers and sword um, swordmen at the ground. So the enemy wanted to go to the south. The the Medina had two entrances. The small entrance was at the south side, and the north side had a big entrance. At the north side, the small entrance, so the Abu Sufyan soldiers could not enter the small entrance. Instead of taking the shortcut, they they took the hard they took the hard place. So they. So they go to the north north entrance and they stayed there and they camp and they camp over there and they the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam wanted to take his soldiers to Ohud mountain to fight with the enemies before they go before they traveled well, he asked some suggestions what should they do about fighting one um, sahaba told the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam that we should not go out for fighting We should stay in Medina, and we should we should stay in the stay in Medina and fight with them. And the men and the women could help us from the rooftop by throwing rocks. But the Munafik or the false Muslims agreed because they could skip the fight and they could stay home. So no one then then no one would even know. But A young Muslim Sahaba told the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that we should go out from Medina and fight with the bad guys. That we should show them that we are not afraid of them. So Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam liked that suggestion, and they went out to fight with the strong and bad Quraysh. So the enemies planned that one group should fight face to face, and the other two horsemen would would fight from the sides. The Muslims would be had to attack by front, side, and behind. But Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was the best commander in chief in the whole world. He put his army in in the middle of two mountains. One small mountain was in the left side, and the right side had a big mountain, the Uhud mountain, to protect the to. The end. The horsemen could go around the small mountain and attack and attack from the behind. So he put fifty archers at the top of that small mountain. When when they were arriving there, they then it became us. Then it became night. Then they had to sleep. Fifty people were guarding and the others were sleeping. When they prayed their fajr prayer, then the munafiq false Muslim. We're making excuses. They, um, Abdullah bin Ubaid and his three hundred soldiers, were making such bad excuses, and they, and they had planned the whole time to, 
they had they had planned the whole time to betray the Muslims. Then the Muslim army had only 700 soldiers, and the Muslim had not many stuff to fight. They had only 150 horses and 50 camels and 700 war uniform, and the Quraysh had. 2,000 war uniform and they had soldiers like 3,000 and they had horses 200 and 3,000 camels so when they arrived there at the next morning and uh, when it was after the Muslims prayed their evening prayer evening prayer or the Zuhr prayer then they made up their position for fight the, and Prophet ﷺ told his archers not to, not to move from their position without the prophets, prophets, without the prophets. Uh, if the prophet says to move, then they should move. Without his permission, they could not move from his their place or position. Then. Abu Sufyan started making excuses that they, he want, he, they did not want to fight with the Ansars, the Medina's Muslims. They only wanted to fight with the Makkah's Muslim, the Muhajireen. But the, the Ansars were really powerful and great supporters of the Prophet They rejected Abu Sufyan's order or excuses. Then the next solution of Abu Sufyan Abu Amir, the old and respected great leader of Medina before Islam came. He hated Muslims and he wanted to help the Quraysh to, to fight against the great Muslims. But the Ansars also rejected their old, old, old bad leader, old, old religious leader. Then the Quraysh wanted to start the battle. Then one big strong horseman came out from the fighting group. He wanted to challenge the soldiers of Muslims. Zubayr, peace be upon him, came on his camel with, with a sword like this large. With a big lord and Zubayr, peace be upon him, won. Then the enemies wanted to fight and then they were, all the groups were fighting and fighting and every time Khalid bin Walid, Khalid who won the horse, the Quraysh horseman leader wanted to attack the Muslims from behind but the 50 archers would keep shooting and keep shooting and stop the horsemen but they were fighting and Abu Sufyan's wife Hind who brought his slave uh, Javalin, she told her slave that if Javalin could kill Hamza peace be upon him, she would free him from slavery. So here, these weapons are made by, I made them. These are not made by other people. These are made by myself. I made them. And this, uh, he and Javalin had a trident. He used his trident. He went behind a rock and threw his trident and Hamza peace be upon him and Hamza peace be upon him had died with the big strong sharp trident that killed him when the Christ saw that uh, Hamza peace be upon him had died they were very happy but when the Muslims saw Hamza peace be upon him had died because he was the biggest strong and tough and powerful lion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he was the best supporter of Muslims so the enemy so the Muslims became furious and mad and they started to fight like the best soldiers in the whole world by this brave and a brave Muslim action the enemies won ran away from their own lives so when the 50 archers saw that the Prophet ﷺ was winning, they were running away and the archers wanted to help. They shoot their arrows at the enemies and they were chasing the one and Muslims were chasing who were fighting. Who, 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 the Muslims were chasing who were running for their own lives. They were like, 
shooting away and shooting away. They were fighting and fighting. They just wanted victory. And the Muslims wanted to have the revenge of their great Hamza peace be upon him had died. So Muslim, some of the Muslim are Muslim soldiers had small little knives. When the enemy started running, they said, fire, like spot soldiers attack. All of the Muslim soldiers threw their spear at the enemies and they were all uh, laying down and others did not have when they lose their swords they throw their knife and some of them even throw it at the head when then shaitan brainwashed the 50 archers but zubair is abdullah bin zubair who was the archer leader and his 10 so 10 group were still on that place 10 10 soldiers were on that place for the fight but the 50 or 40 archers came down to take the other swords that the enemies dropped but when the bad Khalid the horseman leader saw that he came out with his big harpoon or sword he came and attacked the four the 10 soldiers the archers the archers had died now the Muslim had a big problem that their archers had died now that they were attacked by the by the behind and when the when when the other Quraysh team were running away when they saw that Khalid has taken over them then they ran back to fight then they were fighting and fighting some of them some of our Muslim soldiers did not know what to do they were in a big trouble they don't know what to do some of them started to run away and some were trying to uh, fight and save and wanted their victory and they wanted to save Medina and save Prophet ﷺ. then Prophet ﷺ had only two solutions number one he should fight with the enemies and save as Muslims as he could and number two he could run away for his own life but he chose number one and he ran to the battlefield and he he tried to save as many Muslim as he, as he had only nine sahabas were ne close to him one big sahaba strong but he was young he was just only 20 or 16 years old he used his body and hand as a human shield for the Prophet he wanted to give his life for the Prophet he, were, he was super close to the Prophet but some of them were very mad he, they tried to protect the Prophet but Prophet was hit on his elbow with a sword by a Quraysh soldier then the human shield and Sahaba killed that man with furious anger then Ali and Abu Bakr and Amar peace be upon him came to rescue the Prophet and they were fighting and fighting but then when Muhammad saw that the Muslim had no way to win then he told his soldiers to go up to the Uhud mountain because they could not win because the Muslim for their 40 archers had disobeyed Prophet order now they had they were defeated by the strong Aish then the Quraysh were happy to make defeat them but some of the soldiers were climbing up the old mountain every time they climb the Muslims throw the spears and shoot their strong arrows some of them had poison in their pockets and used poison in the arrows top in the steel place and they shoot that one of them already hit some headshots of the enemies but some of them he mm, killed them and some of them mm, had a shot but still trying to get up and then died then the biggest mistake that the Christ tribe did to go back home with their soldiers this was the biggest blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then they pray to Allah and they give thanks to Allah for making this big blessing and the 50 archers would if the 50 archers would have listened this listen to the prophet 
they would have won and their flags would be up at the they would put their flags at the ground and they will say victory is for Muslims but now the Muslims were defeated and 64 Ansars were died and four Muslims of Muhajirin, the Makkah's Muslim, had died. Then Muslims were only 500 and 582. Then they, if they, then Shaitan, then they, the 50 archers listened to Shaitan, and that was the biggest mistake in the whole universe and history. So Battle of Ahud has ended. So thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. Zazakallah khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I will wait for the next part. I will tell you part 16 at next time or tomorrow. Goodbye.